Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here. We're going to talk about the uh, latest storm moving into our region for Wednesday night and early Thursday morning. These are the highlights. With the storm, there will be a couple thunderstorms uh, along the main cold front Thursday morning and even behind it. Now the heaviest precipitation is Thursday morning. So it's after midnight through 9 a.m. Thursday. It's a stronger Pacific storm and atmospheric river with much colder air. So that's going to generate the widespread precipitation and windy conditions. Now showers will continue uh, and some light precipitation over the mountains uh, into Friday night. But the bulk of these rainfall amounts are expected early Thursday morning. Three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half in most areas with the mountain areas two to three inches of water below the snow level. Speaking of the snow, Snow level is going to get really low, down to 3,500 feet early Thursday morning, so keep that in mind. Could see some snow in the Cajon Pass. 6 to 12 inches for our mountain communities above 5,000 feet. And some pockets up around 7,000 feet, such as Snow Valley, 20 inches of snow. So around 2 feet. Uh, scattered precipitation, rising snow levels continue on Friday and Friday night. Uh, but it'll be light. It looks like a dry weekend, and then the next chance of rain is late Sunday night and Monday. That storm looks weaker at this time. Now we saw some precipitation. Look at that. Uh, precipitation occurred yesterday on Tuesday, and it was confined to the coast, even though it spread all the way up to the San Bernardino Mountains. The heavy amounts were right along the coast. Up to an inch fell over a few hours. Here's a zoomed up version of March 11th. Uh, localized one inch occurred in La Jolla. Now our deficits are huge. So we're still behind five or six inches of rain uh, all along the coast. Uh, we're still under 50% of normal. The next storm, unlike yesterday, this storm is coming from the north. It's pounding into central California right now as this video is produced. This is a satellite image showing the ice and cold tops, which typically indicates uh, heavy precipitation. That band where the arrows pointed will sink down towards LA and San Diego early Thursday. The radar shows that band, and there's an intense area of heavy rain within the main band of rain. That should be similar when it makes it down to San Diego and LA. Uh, how do we know that? Uh, well, the latest guidance, which is a collection of a lot of weather models, shows that exactly. After midnight, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., slamming into L.A. Uh, and northern Orange County by 2 a.m. Now that shifts further south between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m., reaching northern San Diego County probably before 7 a.m., maybe as early as 5 a.m. and western Riverside County. Now, uh, for San Diego, western and northern county, looks like 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. will be the heaviest band of rain, and this includes the Inland Empire. Now, for San Diego County, where the whole county is covered, that looks like between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. For South San Diego County and the urban areas, uh, Metro San Diego, looks like timing of 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now, overall, everyone's going to see rain, including the deserts. The orange shaded area is where we'll see the heaviest rain, uh, likely over an inch. This is a collection of dozens of weather models put together on this display. Now, here's some specifics. San Diego Valley, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half, so those areas should do best. Uh, orange and Inland Empire and San Diego Coast, those areas a half inch to around an inch. A lot of places we'll see around an inch. Mountains one to two, locally three up in the Cajon Pass, such as Devore, and maybe up to a half inch in the deserts, but mostly below a half inch. Light precipitation Friday and Friday night. Snow levels, those are gonna crash Thursday morning along with the cold front and atmospheric river. So the cold air will be rushing down. Uh, because this is so unstable, we should see snow grapple, that's snow pellets, in the mountains as well. Very common with a strong cold front. Uh, rising snow level on Friday and Friday night, but before 
that all happens Thursday morning, we're talking inch to two inches an hour with 12 to eight inches around 6,500 feet, six to 12 inches above 5,500 feet, and even a couple inches down to 4,000 feet. The rainfall rates or intensity, that's what's most important with these storms. That's what causes flooding. Uh, most areas will see quarter to half inch. That'll cause some low-lying flooding and nuisance flooding, but we could see some pockets of 0.75 on burn scars and urban areas. That gets more into the territory. We've looked at hundreds of weather events with rainfall rates of 0.75 on burn scars and in urban concrete areas that can cause flash flooding and significant flooding. Thursday, uh, that's when the precipitation is going to occur in all areas, last in the deserts. Um, small hail is possible, uh, especially Thursday afternoon when that cold air and those low snow levels rush in with additional showers and even thunderstorms. Now we could even see pockets of heavier rain than 0.75 though they should be uh, very localized, but still impactful. The uh, winter storm warning remains in effect for the mountains. That includes high winds and heavy snow. Again, snowfall one to two inches per hour. The flood watch remains in effect for all areas below the snow level, not in the deserts. Uh, deserts have wind advisories for the strong winds, and we also have wind advisories for the coast for strong winds with this cold front Thursday morning. Here's the grand totals. If you like to look at those, um, you can see all areas except for the deserts, basically one to one and a half inches from this storm. Uh, the storm on Monday is weaker, so we don't expect significant, even though it could be widespread precipitation on Monday. We will be monitoring the bridge line and airport. The good news is that snow levels get really low. That helps the burn scar, even after the snow melts. Uh, the bad news is that at and below 4,000 feet, we will be seeing some very heavy rain Thursday morning. This is the heavy rain. Uh, we are talking one to two inches in those burn scars below 4,000 feet. And that rain is going to be heavy, again, up to 0.75, up to three quarters of an inch per hour early in the morning between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. Elsewhere, most areas will see an inch, inch and a half. Uh, up to a half inch in the deserts. This is the concern area for tonight, LA Basin first, because it's coming in from that direction. And then all of our area, Inland Empire, Orange County, San Diego, uh, early Thursday morning after midnight. The wind areas are shown here. The yellow and orange are where we'll have gusts 45 to 55 miles per hour. So high profile vehicles. Elsewhere, windy too. Again, the wind will occur out ahead of the rain and right along the band of heavy rain. Gusts the 30, 40 miles per hour can cause some wind damage. The snowfall will be large, probably the largest storm we've seen this year. Uh, up around 7,000 feet, we could be talking close to two feet. Down around 6,000 feet, we're talking six to 12 inches even some accumulation down to 4,000 feet as shown here. Here's a zoomed up version for the heaviest of snow that occurs in Mount San Jacinto, Mount San Ragonio, the San Bernardino County Mountains, uh, and then of course on the left-hand side here, the San Gabriel Mountains. Really cold temperatures Friday morning, uh, so that snow will stick around all day Friday Chains will be in effect. The um, snowpack will be considerable all the way down to about 4,000 feet. So it's going to be difficult travel in the mountains on Friday with additional light snow occurring. The atmospheric river is the culprit along with this cold, strong front. The two combined. Atmospheric river is moisture and wind. The two combined, they hold together and move right through Southern California is shown here early Thursday morning between 3 a.m. and 9 a.m. Now, what happens on Friday? Well, that's a different weather system. It's a large warm front of moisture. The snow levels rise Friday night, but uh, this does bring light precipitation even Friday and even Friday night. So keep that in mind. 
The San Diego River will be watched closely right now. It's predicted under the 10 foot flood stage. We've looked at a lot of different flood events. Um, multiple roads are usually closed at and above 10 feet. Now at this level, that's predicted eight and a half feet, we typically have the most flood prone areas. So the lowest lying areas are impacted. Um, but there's still a probability with the heavy rain coming in, it could get up to 10 feet. The storm system is large, broad. A lot of blue means a lot of cold air with this one. Unlike the one we had on Tuesday, this one draws down a lot of cold air directly from the north. Very consolidated direct hit. Now, uh, when's the next storm? This one looks like it's going further north, and you can see the black line is further north. More targeting central northern California. We get the tail end of that, it looks like, on Monday. Now the next storm looks like it's going to track even further north the middle of next week. So we may not get anything from this storm as it moves across the Pacific Northwest. The outlook indicates that um, the precipitation pulls further north in the middle of March as shown in the green here. Um, maybe not zero precipitation for us, but we get the very bottom edge. Very mild conditions in middle to last part of March in the Northeast. Uh, we start to moderate here at the end of March and get back to normal temperatures. The jet stream retreats further north and allows that warming. Uh, so you see active weather in Pacific Northwest even in late March. The first atmospheric river is coming through and that looks like it'll come through Thursday morning. The next one is on Monday. And the potential third one is much further north, and that's targeting the Pacific Northwest. A little information about the weather that we should get. Um, on Thursday, some of you may get hail, some of you may get grapple. Grapple is snow pellets by definition. Um, it's crushable, it's like dipping dots. It's very soft. It's large snowflakes that are encased in a thin layer of ice. Whereas hail, that's ice, snow, everything in case, and it's very hard. So when you pinch it, it's a piece of ice, almost like a small rock. So in the coast and valleys, we could see some small hail. So please report that. In the mountains, because it's so unstable, it's very common to have snow pellets and snow grapple. By the way, snow pellets and snow grapple are very dense, um, but they do present avalanche concerns sometimes. Uh, because typically what happens is you get fluffier, drier snow at the end of the storm on top of the snow grapple. So snow grapple can occur in temperatures in the 30s and can occur in temperatures in the 20s, whereas hail can occur at any temperature. Different precipitation types can be compared to coins like shown on here when reporting. Now here are two pictures, one taken in the mountain, same storm, one taken in San Diego City Heights. Both people were asking, what am I seeing? Well, on the left-hand side in the mountains, temperatures were 29, 30 degrees. It was snow pellets or grapple, soft styrofoam-like, even dipping dock-like material. Um, it's true snow. On the right-hand side is not snow. That was in City Heights. That was pure hail. Of course, hail can occur at any temperature. In this particular case, temperatures were in the 50s. And hail in very cold, you know, cold storms is common. Um, in, in the San Diego coast, and we may see some of that Thursday, even after the storm blows through in the afternoon. Now, also what we see in really cold storms, it makes for pretty photos, um, but it could be an impact to utility lines, rhyming. So when you have a prolonged period such as 18 to 24 hours of very cold temperatures, and you don't need precipitation, you just need cloud cover high moisture levels, and you can get thick rhyming ice like shown here. In some cases, even without it snowing or raining, you can get this rhyme ice because all you need is clouds that are below 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will freeze instantly and start to accumulate and build up on trees and power lines. Here are some resources. You can monitor the wind speeds and the rainfall at the link shown above. All right, everyone, stay safe. Be prepared for significant winter travel 
above 4,000 feet, at and above 4,000 feet, significant heavy rain in urban areas right during the commute Thursday morning. On and off rain, showers, and light precipitation will continue all the way into Friday night. Uh, some of you, if you do get significant weather, you can always report it to the National Weather Service at weather.gov right off of our page or post it on X or Facebook. Stay safe, everyone.